and welcome to the final piece of the Dark Souls Firebomb Trilogy. I've heard your screaming, and your patience was appreciated. This run. who baby, this run. There was a reason it took several months to get out. So sit back, settle in with your beverage of choice, and join me for the Dark Souls 3 Firebomb's only run. First things first, let's go over the rules. Starting off the list, no using any regular weapons. We're only allowed to use firebombs and firebomb equivalents. Because trust me when I say this, if we don't give ourselves that little caveat, this run gets nowhere. And if that upsets you, rest easy in the knowledge that allowing that little fudging of the rules ended up increasing my suffering a hundredfold. You're welcome. Second, no cheating or exploits. And third, our final goal is to try to beat the game. I'll do my best to beat every boss along the way, but after the last two Dark Souls firebomb runs, I know better than to assume that'll be possible. Did you get all that? Cool. In that case, let me show you how bad this run is from the word go. I go with the warrior, because it has the most strength, and select firebombs as our starting gift because, well, you know. And after deciding that I was just delaying the inevitable, I confirm our character and get this party started. Our number one priority right now is obtaining more firebombs. These ought to do. And with our newfound ammunition in hand, it's already time for the first boss. My boy Gundir here is one of the easiest bosses in the game. But in order to beat him with firebombs, we need every single bomb that we have in order to win. Oh, and we'll need to parry him for extra repost damage. Hence my desperate attempts to bat away his halberd there. I'm a bit out of practice. Round 2 goes a bit better. After quote unquote mastering the repost, the firebomb damage is pretty decent. Combine that with the 5 firebombs we picked up earlier and we should... Fuck. Alright, start over. Okay, remade my character, got all my stuff back, let's try this again. Considering I literally have to remake my character if we waste a firebomb, I spend some time getting used to Gundir's attack patterns. And eventually, I shake off the rust. The hell kind of posturing am I doing there? I get off the remaining parries, and get him to phase 2. At this point, parrying won't help us anymore, so I switch tactics, laying into him whenever I have a free moment. As you can see, we really did need every single bomb. Hell of a way to start a run. After getting settled into Firelink Shrine for the last time, I meet up with our Keeper. I, uh, just wanted to apologize in advance for the amount of bullshit you're gonna have to deal with. Sorry about that. First stop in Firelink is Grandma Undead here, who will be our source of firebombs for the time being. A hundred each? Eh, it could be worse. We also make sure to get reacquainted with our good pal Andre. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. I mean, I've been doing push-ups in preparation for this, but I don't really know what that has to do with anything. Andre trades us some Sunny D for our Bahama Blast. I pump the majority of my souls into strength then give Grandma the remainder of my scraps for a few firebombs. And with a bit of hardcore parkour, we net ourselves an Estus Shard and the Silver Serpent Ring. Hopefully that's enough. Please God, let that be enough. Alright gang, let's see what we're up against. I run around the map, collecting any and all scraps I can find, but our dragon friend here is going to be the real path to victory. If he'd stop setting me on fire anyway. Dave the Dragon here can get us about 500 souls each run, which translates to 5 free firebombs. You know, assuming we don't die ourselves. It may not be the most comfortable soul grinding technique out there, but at least the run won't soft lock due to a lack of ammunition. So that's good. I get a few more supplies, get a key for later, then make my way to the shortcut. Uh. Okay, change of plans. We're gonna go get Grey Rat first. Grey Rat. Grey Rat, help! Grey Rat, help! You no jailer, are you? Gee, what gave it away? Well, at least that's out of the way. Now we can unlock our shortcut. Oh. Oh no. Oh, please no. Thank you, Dark Souls. That should not have been that hard. But we finally made it home alongside Grey Rat. Time to see what my boy has for me. Hello. Discounts and alternatives. That's what I like to see. You know what I don't like to see? Inventory limits. That's not a mistake. I can only carry 20 firebombs at a time. Cool. Real cool. No, really. I love it. Oh, would you look at that? My super cool rope firebombs have a limit of fucking 10. Well, no time like the present. Let's see what we've gotten ourselves into. 
Vort. Our first real boss. Being an ice elemental, you'd think he'd be weak to fire, right? Well, uh, not quite, no. Are the ropes any better? Oh, good, they're worse, actually. Well, at least there's still hope. As you can see, I've only got 22 strength and 9 dexterity at the moment, and firebombs actually scale with those stats this time around. I grind out a few levels in strength, getting up to 25, just to see how big of a difference we're talking here in terms of damage. Allegedly, firebombs have S scaling, so surely it'll be some big gains, right? Six points. That's two extra damage per level of strength. This is going to be one of those runs again, isn't it? All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so, spent a little time grinding, had a lot of fun, definitely didn't pray for death on a daily basis or anything. As you can see here, we've got 40 dex, 40 strength, and pretty much maxed out firebomb stock. Let's give this another go. I swear to Gwyn, if this doesn't work, I will quite literally cry. Oh, oh hey, that's pretty good damage actually. Run's not dead yet. I do my best not to waste any bombs, and we hit phase two pretty quickly. Combine that with the fact that we still have rope firebombs and we have this fight in the bag. User error aside, I'm actually really enjoying using firebombs this go around. Normally they feel a bit clunky, or like the throwing arc is weird, but this time they feel like a legitimate ranged weapon that can keep enemies at bay. And after a little practice and a few silent tears of joy, weeks of grinding finally comes to fruition. It's finally over. Oh, right, the rest of the game. Okay, Dark Souls, you win. I give up. White flag raised. Jeez. If you could just let me out, Jeez. that'd be... Cheese. What, uh, Cheese. what's that noise? Cheese. Oh god. Cheese. Not again. Cheese. No, please, Cheese. no, I just want to leave! Cheese. Well, no rest for the wicked. Moving on. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Good dog. Please, grant me death. Undo my shackles. God, if that isn't a mood. Come on, Yol. If I have to suffer, so do you. For those of you who don't know, Yol is instrumental in a specific storyline where you become the true Dark Lord. But that's not what I care about. I only care about those sweet, sweet levels he's willing to give me if I throw myself off a cliff a few dozen times. Which I do. With enthusiasm. I put my free levels into a little bit of extra health, and after running around to get some more items, I- Yo, you asshole! We had a deal! Well, at least we've added another waifu to the party. She'll be important later. I also talked to Grey Rat, who's apparently getting bored of selling me firebombs and wants to go exploring. Sure, buddy. Have at it. I don't think I'll run low on firebombs anytime soon. Do stay safe, you hear? Aw, you too, pal. After a bit more exploring, I grab myself the Fire Clutch Ring, which boosts my firebomb damage by 15%. Honestly, the damage itself is pretty respectable. I'm feeling optimistic. And good feelings gone. With no lock-ons for the individual pods, this boss is a free aim nightmare. The additional adds that are all over this fight aren't making my job any easier either. At least the tree hates them as much as I do. After a few practice runs, I realize that it's more efficient to break as many pods as I can before Phase 2. That way we get as many DPS bursts as possible. After getting exceptionally good at free aiming, I knock the Greatwood into phase two with 10 firebombs to spare, which, as you can see, should be more than enough. A few more quick tosses and the Greatwood goes down. Hey, my boy, how was your trip? Ah, what you got here? Lightning bombs and faith scaling, huh? All right, mental note made. God damn it, Carl, what are you doing here? All right, look, I gotta go yell at someone. Don't go anywhere. Oh, God. All right, hold on. My giant is a little rusty. Who are you? Lemon. I help any time. Oh, okay. Thank you. I help any time. Okay, time to leave. Carl? Carl! What are you doing? I've unraveled the riddle of this inscrutable lift. I'm happy for you, pal. Hey, I got a mistake to make over here. You want to come with? Ha ha! Oh, God, that's terrible. Uh, Carl, I choose you. Go get him. Carl? Carl? Ooh, you're okay, bud. Walk it off. In all seriousness, this boss is a good precursor to some of the nonsense we're going to be going up against in this run. With some bosses being nearly fireproof, the NPC quest lines are actually pretty important, which means that if any of them die, the run dies with them. Which is why it's so important that I keep Big Bad here focused on me while Carl does his job. Or at least helps. <laughs> well, at least one of us is excited about it. <gasps> Guys, look! It's me! Or the British version of me, anyway. God, I look good in this game. All right, let's go. Wait, hold up. I think there's actually an Estus Shard this way. And while we're here, we might as well get one of my favorite armor sets. Not too shabby. Uh, uh, I mean, it's terribly shabby, but I think that's the point. And with a little bit of ladder magic, we can get a few free souls and move on. Works every time. 
Last but not least, we'll get Orbeck here moving along. He's a bit of an asshat, but he might be useful later. We will learn together. It shall be like our very own school. Uh huh. Sure. See you there. Ah, <sighs> sorry. Blacked out for a moment there. Orbeck and Finheim is a cause of much consternation. Say no more. Hey, Orbeck, think fast. <laughs> what a tool. Why did I do that again? Oh, right, for the sword. This sword acts like the red tear stone ring, boosting your damage if your health is low. We'll never use it for direct damage, but if we get stuck somewhere, the Morian blade might actually be our only way out. Better safe than sorry. I'll keep it equipped for now for testing purposes, but it's pretty heavy, and it's really knocking my fashion souls out of whack. The Crystal Sage isn't all that bad. For the first phase, I just run up to him and pepper him with rope firebombs. And by the time the second phase rolls around, I have enough firebombs remaining that I could spare a few to get rid of his clones. Our regular firebombs do some pretty hefty damage, and with a little bit of blessed RNG, the Crystal Sage goes down without too much effort. I make my way into the Cathedral of the Deep, unlocking all the elevators and shortcut. Alright then. I also unlock Rosaria's chambers, then quickly return to Firelink to use this elevator. And upon returning back down, we find our favorite Rapscallion. Sure, he's trying to murder me, but I can fix him! Or, at the very least, I can pay him exorbitant amounts of souls for black firebombs. You know, one of the two. Okay, let's do some recap. We've got Grey Rat for our regular firebombs and Patches for our black firebombs, which just leaves those elusive lightning urns. Which means Grey Rat, my darling boy, needs someone to make sure that he doesn't get into too much trouble while he goes out on his next outing. But what kind of sucker would be willing to go on an escort quest? Hello? Hello? Yeah, that'll do. Here, Carl, take your armor and meet up with Grey Rat. Think you can do that for me? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. With my web of NPCs following the paths I've decided for them, I decide to clean up Firelink's shrine a little bit. Yep, definitely not just doing this for a cool helmet. Quiet, you! I'll get to the Bloodborne Molotov run when I'm good and ready. Anyway, let's get back to the bosses, shall we? First up is the Deacons of the Deep. The damage is fine enough, and the fact that it deals splash damage is a nice bonus. All in all, an easy first phase. The second phase isn't much harder. All I have to do is thread the needle with my firebombs, and the fight finishes itself. One final drive-by with a rope firebomb, and they go down. Easy. After a quick visit to my fair and keep chiropractor, I make sure to get above the trees to visit an old friend. Good old Big Booty Bouncing has gotten a bit beefier since we last fought, but not enough to matter. Better luck in Elden Ring, fella. And with Triple B out of the way, it's time for our first Lord of Cinder. You, uh, you guys look busy. Do you want me to leave, or...? You know, considering your title, I was expecting the Abyss Watchers to be a bit harder. But even when using regular firebombs, I can knock out half a health bar with a single bomb. And phase one is over, only ten firebombs into the fight. Ah, getting embered up, are we? Does that increase your fire resistance? Mm, nope. In fact, you're taking significant damage, my guy. All those fancy flips don't count for shit if I can get the counter damage. Back to the abyss with ye. One lord down, three to go. Moving right along to the catacombs, hey, I make buddy, my way to... Hey, the hell is that noise? Hey, hey, buddy. Buddy. Okay, hey, time to leave. Hey, hey, Christ, buddy, there's more of them. Hey, buddy. 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 Hey, uh, usually people black out after they drink, not before. Eh, first time for everything, I guess. Definitely the weirdest hangover I've ever had. At least it's quiet. How you doing, meatbag? God, Jesus wept. Well, Tony's definitely gotten a few promotions since we last saw him, and our firebombs don't do a whole lot of damage. But luckily, we don't need them to. So long as we have good aim, High Lord Tony's gimmick is easy enough to overcome. And after using about 20 firebombs of varying flavors, Mr. Bones goes down. Bye, Tony. Fuck you! Anyway, let's head on down this bridge I broke earlier, so we can- Ah, crap, you again. Uh, no thank you. Oh, damn, collateral damage. If I remember correctly, this mimic can actually kick this demon's ass. S sometimes. Thankfully, I'm the king of the Tonys now, so I'll just have my boys take care of him for me. Welcome to the bone zone, my guy. God, the smoldering lake underbelly is a bit of a maze. Must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. Uh oh, uh oh, uh, wait, no, I'm the king of the bone zone! 30 minutes or so later, and I finally found my way out of the labyrinth. Just taking a breather, don't mind me. Besides, we've got a bummer of a boss coming up. That's right, we've got the old Demon King up ahead. And as I'm sure anyone who's been paying attention up to this point can tell you, demons in this game are pretty damn fireproof. Exhibit A. 
So if we're gonna commit regicide, we're gonna need a new strategy. A strategy that I've been slowly cultivating for hours now. Welcome back to Anne Orlando, everyone. It's been a while. First things first, we need to actually get in. Oop, crap, they've got a dog. Nice puppy. Have a biscuit? Oh, okay, uh, not a fan. What about a stick? Do you want a stick? Stick, stick, stupid. Here, fetch a stick. Well, you don't like the stick? Back to Firelink, where we tell Grey Rat that we'd really appreciate it if he scoped out Anne Orlando for us, which my precious baby boy is more than happy to do. God, I love him so much. After testing out a few stylish new duds and exploring the Boreal Valley a bit, we arrive at the Boreal Sewers, which, if I've done everything correctly, should be Grey Rat Corpse free. Spiders be gone, and okay, looks like we're good. Celebratory sippy break. Oh, Carl, poor innocent Carl. You did good, buddy. I'm proud of you. Almost makes me a little upset about what I'm gonna put you through later. But before we worry about any of that, we've got a Pontiff to overthrow. Pontiff is definitely a heavy hitter, and I'm not great at parrying, so that strategy isn't gonna work as well for me as it does for others. On the few times I do get the parry, it looks to me like he recovers too quickly for me to get any repose damage in. So trying to parry him repeatedly wouldn't be all that useful anyway. Keeping some distance between us seems to work pretty well, but Sullivan has a few moves that close the distance that I'll need to relearn before we can really lay on the hurt. After several deaths, I eventually find that sweet spot distance where the Pontiff doesn't quite know how to react to being hit, which lets me easily get to Phase 2. Surprisingly, Phase 2 isn't all that bad. With the splash damage from my black firebombs being rather hefty, it's not overly difficult to kill his double before they can do anything significant. And after a harrowing few minutes of heroically running away, Pontiff goes down. There's nothing else for us here. Let's finish strong. Time to murder me some Ornstein and Smo. Or Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn is fine too. This boss isn't too bad. They take enough damage from my firebombs, and they don't gain any significant resistances in Phase 2 either. By the way, for all you Dark Souls veterans out there, did you know? You can actually run to the statue side of the room whenever Gwendolyn fires their Phase 2 Arrow Storm to completely negate the attack. You'll have to dodge their magic, but there's an overhang here that keeps the arrows from ever hitting you. Just a neat little strategy for anyone who didn't know. Anyway, this fight is pretty easy. After adding a little bit more spicy pepper to Gwendolyn than Aldrich was accounting for, they go down. Two Lords of Cinder to go. Heading back to Lothric, I show Emma how rope firebombs work. I think she was impressed. Oh, crap, I accidentally set her perch on fire. Ah, oh, God, and the carpet. Uh, okay, no witnesses around. We'll just say it was like that when we got here. All right, well, shit, one witness. We'll take care of that, though. Not much to say about legs for days here. Throw firebombs, keep your distance. God, can I just say how much I love how well the firebombs throw? Look at that distance. If the other games were remotely like this, these firebomb runs would have been so much easier. Now. With the dancer out of the way, it's finally time. Time to send my precious baby boy out to his death. God, I almost feel bad. But it is his wish to be useful to me. But I don't want to sit around and die a petty rat. And I consider myself your friend. Uh, cut, cut the camera. There's something in both my eyes. Cut the camera. Grey Rat, you've served me well. Thank you for all you've done, my boy. Your sacrifice just might save this run. All right, well, time to move on. We're entering some really rough territory right now, boys and girls. I hope you're ready. The Dragon Slayer Armor. Ornstein 3.0. The Clam Man. Whatever your name for him, this asshole here is one of the main reasons this run took several months to get out. Problem number one should be immediately obvious. The damage. It's shit. Problem number two is his shield. The damage is bad enough as it is. If he blocks one of my firebombs with that thing, I may as well have just thrown a firebomb over the side of the arena, with as much use as it does me. And problem number three, the stupid elevator. It takes 23 seconds to make its way methodically up to the boss arena, which sounds like a short amount of time, but let me assure you, when you're dying on repeat within the first few seconds of the fight, those 23 seconds start to really add up. With all three of these problems bearing down on us, I realized I wasn't going to be winning this battle with skill alone. Time for a little experimentation. I grabbed the red tear stone ring, got myself into range, then immediately fucked it up by healing instead of throwing a firebomb. Why am I like this? On a slightly more successful attempt, I finally got my numbers. 98. You know, as opposed to 81. Not exactly the boost I was hoping for. All right, well, what if we have the red tear stone ring and the Morian blade? 117, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Or I thought we were. Turns out, I'm really bad at no hit runs. Like, really bad. Combine that with the fact that the Dragon Slayer's second phase becomes a bit of a bullet hell, and I was starting to lose hope. So, after multiple days of attempts, all of which ended in failure, I gave up. Then, a few weeks later, it hit me. I'm not a master Dark Souls player. Why the hell am I trying to play like one? My claim to fame is my patience, not my skill. It was time for some testing. I dropped a single firebomb on the ground, sat at the bonfire, and presto no changeo, it's still there. 
Use a homeward bone, however, and the bomb disappears. Which means in order to do this next bit, I'm gonna have to do all my traveling by foot. Pray for me. I head back up this godforsaken elevator, rub up against this fog wall as close as I can, drop several black fire bombs, then go all the way back down the elevator, back up the elevator, drop more fire bombs. You, you see where I'm going with this? Do you see the hell I've made for myself? Now, some of you may be wondering, Lemon, why didn't you drop all your fire bombs at the door, then come back? Because if I do that, dear audience member, any time I pick up bombs that I haven't fully depleted before returning to the fog wall will just get sent back to the bonfire, wasting all of my effort. Not to mention you can't tell which items are which inside said fog wall during the middle of fighting a difficult boss battle. And also because black fire bombs do the most damage. Please work, please work, please work. Oh, thank God. We've got our strategy. Now it all comes down to skill. Well, shit. Oh, by the way, every time you die, the bombs despawn. So yeah, gonna have to do all that prep work each and every time I die. As I'm sure you can gather, learning the proper timings and openings to fight this boss was the second worst delay in releasing this video. What was the first? Oh, you'll see. My god, will you see. Skip forward a week of attempts or so, and I've actually gotten good enough with this boss fight that I could consistently get to the second phase. I'm also really good at dying in the second phase. So that's neat. Once again, heroically running away from the boss in between attacks is actually the go-to strategy. Not only does this keep me safe, but it also gives me plenty of time to get in one, sometimes two hits. I also started to leave all my firebombs in one large pile at the fog wall, which helped remove a bit of panic whenever I need to run up and get more bombs. I'll save you a few days of suffering, but just know that phase two was extremely disheartening to struggle through. Really? All right, what about you, Big Show? Anything to add? Finally, after literal weeks of attempts, the skills and strategies all lined up. I could see the code. RNG was no longer a factor. The boss that had plagued my nightmares for endless nights, this frustrating combination of ones and zeros, finally, finally went down. Oh, right, the rest of the game. We head on into... Um, into the archive. I don't know why I did that. After a few minutes of panic scrolling through the menus, the stark truth of the matter hit me. I can't get more lightning urns until I kill Yorm. You know, good old fireproof Yorm. Ah, fuck it. Act now, think later. Time to serve a sentence in prison! Oh, uh, okay. That was easy. After making my way through the profane capital, we stop by another cell block to visit our old friend Carl. Here to get you out, bud. You ready? I just need a bit more time. Sorry, Carl. There's no time left. Come on. Oh, please. Go on ahead. I've my own road to take, and a duty to fulfill. That is so. <sighs> I know, pal. I know. So, for those of you who haven't figured it out yet, Carl has a very important part to play in the upcoming battle. We can't do any damage to Yorm with firebombs, and Yorm himself is the roadblock keeping me from getting lightning urns, which would be our only active way of dealing damage to him. So, much to my chagrin, it's up to Carl now. Go get him, buddy. Yeah, nicely done, Carl. Ah, shit, no, not him, me, focus on me. All right, there we go. We can do this. I just need him to stay focused on me. The firebombs don't do any damage, but they definitely draw aggro, so if we can keep Carl in the background, we're golden. Yeah! Wait, where are you going? No! No! Look at me! Look at me! Shit, fuck. Okay, homeward bone. We can't let Carl... Fuck! God damn it, Carl. You had one job. Well, that's it. That's the end of the run. Carl isn't like a summoned NPC. He won't respawn if we go after Yorm again. So there's nothing we can do. I guess Dark Souls 3 wins. Or it would if I was a fucking quitter. That's right. I started the entire run over. From square one. And this time, we're gonna do it right. Properly timed firebomb strikes to keep aggro. Heals for days in case Carl gets into more trouble than he ought to. Even Carl seems more into it this time. He's properly spacing himself and healing. Good man, Carl! I can deal with anything Yorm can dish out. The only thing that matters now is protecting Carl. Sweet, innocent, badass Carl! This is the run. This is the run! Fucking yes! That's my boy! It's over. Holy fuck, it's over. I'll be honest, Carl. I didn't think we had it in us. I almost wish this run could end here. To be honest, feels like a good stopping point. But, unfortunately, I haven't finished answering the question that started this run all those months ago just yet. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate your help. Time for the final push. One more Lord of Cinder to go. I push my way through the archives, clamber across the rooftops, and mentally prepare myself for what I'm about to find. Good night, sweet prince. Your sacrifice shall not be in vain. This I promise. 
I give his ashes to the shopkeeper, and it's here we find the only reason we push Greer at so far in his endeavors. Unlimited lightning urns. My god, I hope they're worth it. With lightning in hand, it's time we tested out our new weapons. Let's see what we're working with. Damn, nearly 400 damage? Okay, I can dig it. After only a few lightning urns, Osiris is already in his second phase. But this is where it gets a bit rough. Osiris must have watched my previous videos because he's a big fan of thigh gaps, and uses them to his advantage at every opportunity. Luckily, I learned from my Dragon Slayer armor fight, and packed a few extra bombs just in case. In the end, neither gaps nor thighs were enough to stop me. First try, let's go. After that, we... You know, I've never truly understood what is going on at this point. Did, did we just travel back in time? Is that it? Hey, wait a minute, that's my bed! Get out of there, that's not for you! Anyway, Gundir is back again for round two. No parrying necessary this time, though. I'm all grown up now, with an equip load to show for it. That's right, you ain't nut- <laughs> Okay, wait, time out, I need a sippy break! You know what? Gundir is right. We can do better than this. There's one more ring we need to acquire to really push our damage to the limit. And the only way to get there is to meditate on it. Carl was right. Sometimes, you just need a good nap. Not exactly the most calming white noise I've ever heard, but it'll do. There's a lot to do in Dragonland, but we've got too much to take care of back on the mainland, so we'll just have to come back later. The only reason we're here right now is this. The Lightning Clutch Ring. Between this ring and the large supply of Fogwall Lightning Urns, all the bosses that previously gave me trouble are in for a rough time. The old Demon King? Old news. Gundir 2.0? Nothing a few close calls and multiple Lightning Urns couldn't fix. Grey Rat sends his regards. Actually, unless my math is off, I think that's everyone I skipped. Time to find some new prey. Ow! Okay, alright, hold on, let's calm down for a second, I just want to get... Okay, we're just going to delete the last few minutes of me trying and failing to get up those stairs, and just move on. It's time for the Brothers Grimm. Oh dear. Another dogged contender. Well, thank you. I think. You've done quite enough. Now have your rest. That sounds really nice, actually. Do you have a futon or some sort of actual bed? Oh, oh shit, okay, we're fighting now. Not gonna lie, this boss took more effort than it should have. For someone crawling around on his hands and knees, Lorian really knows how to close the gap between us, and I had a lot of trouble learning his timing. However, as with all things, we get there eventually. Alright, one down. Your turn, bookworm. Oh, okay. Uh, you're here now. What, uh, what are you... Oh, come on, man, I just killed that. Lothric and Lorien. Definitely the coolest second phase I've had the pleasure of fighting. Well, okay, pleasure might be too strong a word for it. This run has been hell, but you get the idea. The good news is that if we throw our bombs right, we can actually get both brothers into splash damage. The bad news is that it's a hard fight. No, 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 no! So hard, in fact, that I decided to take a break and kill a dragon instead. Which you'd think would be difficult, considering you can't do the plunging attack to kill it, but no. Just hang out a little bit to the dragon's right, and it struggles to come even close to hitting you. And once you've depleted your entire reserve of lightning urns, just make a mad dash for the doorway, collect your reserves, then wait for a lull in the fire before heading back into the fray. Repeat the strategy ad nauseum, and the ancient dragon goes down in no time at all. God, I hope Elden Ring does better than this. FromSoft is like 2 for 12 when it comes to good dragon fights. But with nothing else to do on this little island, it's time. That's right, it's time for the run killer himself, the Nameless King. Let's just make sure we can get back to the bonfire so we can put a few extra supplies at the fog wall. Um, at the fog wall. Um, um, well, that's gonna be a problem. Unless I'm blind, I don't think there's any way to get back to the bonfire in a way that would keep items from despawning. But who knows? Maybe things will still be okay. Maybe? Oh god, we're gonna fucking die. Okay, so far it's not so bad. These lightning urns aren't gonna help us fight the king himself, so the fact that they're doing as much damage as they are is great. Oh my god, we can even get a poise break. Not actually helpful, since it doesn't increase the damage or anything, but at least it gives me a few more easy opportunities for damage. And about 10 lightning urns later, Big Bird goes down. But, as anyone with a pet knows, any slight against said pet is the ultimate sin. Which means the Nameless King is probably a little upset. J just a little. Oh god. I'm sorry, I panicked and your bird was really scary, please let me live! So yeah, this is going really well. The damage for regular fire bombs? Not great. That's with the clutch ring on, by the way. Combine that with the fact that the Nameless King is understandably angry, and this might be an unbeatable brick wall. But before we give up, let's do the math. Do, do you like math? For the best possible outcome in phase one, I'm using lightning urns. Other fire bombs don't do nearly as much damage, so that's the best tool for the job. Lightning Clutch Ring adds 15% to our damage, Red Tearstone Ring and Morian Blade add another 20% each, 
which means the best possible DPS in Phase 1 would be 756 per urn. The Nameless King has 4,577 health in Phase 1, which means, at peak proficiency, we'll need 6 lightning urns and 1 regular ass rope firebomb to kill the bird. Alright, so far so good. In Phase 2, a black firebomb, our strongest option, has a maximum potential of 350 damage. We only have 10 of those, so 350 times 10 is 3,500. That's not even half of the Nameless King's Phase 2 health, which sits at a whopping 7,100 HP. Regular firebombs, which I have 20 of, have a maximum potential of 224.7 for a grand total of 4,494 damage. So is it possible to beat him? It is if my math is correct. But, and this is the catch, you have to do it all with less than 20% health, effectively meaning that you have to no-hit the Nameless King, all while being very accurate with your ammunition. And while my patience and persistence is the stuff of legends, my skills are not. There's no way in hell that I'm ever going to beat the Nameless King without taking a single hit. Which means there goes a large portion of my damage. So, unless I can convince the Nameless King to sit on 20 rope fire bombs and simultaneously never miss a single bomb, the Nameless King is simply out of my skill range. Which seems like a fair punishment for killing his bird, if I'm being honest. Still feel kind of bad about that. We cool? Yeah, we cool. Back to the grind. The Lothric Princes are considerably easier than the Nameless King, which starts to show in my play. It's kind of like running with a weighted jacket. When you finally get to the race itself and take the weights off for the first time, everything feels so much easier than it used to. So, after much suffering and countless hours of bouncing off of greater trials, the Princes finally meet their end. No more Lords. No more roadblocks. The run can finally end. Or it would, if a creepy old man didn't offer me a scrap of painting. Honestly, you'd think the Chosen Undead would learn from their mistakes at some point. Ah well, back to the painted world we go. Not a whole lot to say about this one. Everything is cold, the local wildlife is unfriendly at best, the snowboarding is enjoyable, but short-lived, and the locals are, well, you have eyes. After murdering a man whose voice is the equivalent of dark chocolate filled with gravel, I finally conquer my fear of reading and push forward to the bosses of the DLC. First up, Champion's Gravetender. This boss is pretty unique considering he plays rather defensively while his wolves play straight offense. Considering how many enemies there are in this boss battle, and considering there's no reachable fog wall to put more supplies next to, any time I can get more splash damage to hit multiple enemies is a good time. When it's down to a 1v1 fight, the new struggle is the fact that our man here plays like a real player, dodging through my firebombs and keeping his shield up whenever he's trying to close the distance. The obvious solution was to parry him, which worked, but only sometimes, as his recovery window is slightly shorter than the time it takes me to follow up with a firebomb. I tried a few other PvP tactics, such as leading him on with rope firebombs, which was fun, but the rope firebomb splash zone was a bit smaller than I'd have liked, which led to some frustrating misses. I was able to whittle him down pretty significantly with this tactic though, and even got him into phase 2, where he summons another enemy to fight. That's right kids, it's time for Sif 3.0. And while she's not terribly hard, she is a drain on my limited resources, which means it becomes another numbers game. On my best attempt, I was able to defeat Sif's cousin, but was low on supplies and out of Estus by the time that happened, which meant it didn't take long for the Gravetender to finish me off. Now, to my credit, I did give Hyper Mode a try, but, well, yeah. Between my lack of skill, the general aggression of the multitude of enemies, and the fact that it's extremely difficult to get a rope firebomb trick to work without taking damage myself, I was at a loss. If anyone can figure out a strategy on how to deal consistent damage to the Gravetender without him dodging or blocking it, please let me know in the comments. Until then, we're moving on. This video has taken long enough to come out as it is. Moving on to Papa Ariandel. This boss feels much more manageable, as it's basically just Priscilla if she was far more aggressive. So long as we keep up the pressure, we can easily whittle her down. That said, we've got three phases of this to deal with, so we better restock. I said we better restock. Hello? This, uh, this requires some testing. Let's go ahead and reset. Okay, we've got our item, pushed as hard against the wall as possible, enter the arena, and immediately grab the item. Grab the item. Grab the item! Why won't you grab the item? Well, shit. I have no idea why this fog wall is thicker than every other fog wall in the game, but there's no way to restock my items. And considering I needed more than 20 lightning urns just to get through phase one, yeah, pretty much that. Man, what a disappointing end to the DLC content. I would have thought I'd be able to do at least one of the bosses. Ah well, that's what I get for not getting good. On to the next DLC. Wait, the first boss of this is the Demon Princess. Demon princes who are fire resistant, have no fog wall, and have three phases. Yeah, no, fuck that, I'm out. So, with that settled, it's time. Time to end this godforsaken run once and for all. Miss Lemon, grant me ash. 
so that I may grant death. It's over. It's finally over. For real this time. I knew this challenge would be rough, but holy shit, I was not prepared. Well, guess there's only one thing left to do. With this unkindled ash, I'll restart the fire once more. Such is the will of the goddess. Such is my fate. And maybe, if the goddess is kind, this nightmare will finally be over. And let this dream, her captor, foretell a pleasant awakening.